Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the M42 Twin 40 Duster. It's a 132nd scale Ravel Renoir model kit, number 85-7822. It's a skill level 2 kit for the intermediate modeler, and it was now brought back by Ravel after a couple of reboxings in 2014. But you can still find these kits on the internet, at auction sites, and in hobby shops. Now the M42 was a self-propelled anti-aircraft tracked vehicle that was developed after World War II. The armament consisted of a fully automatic twin 40 M2A1 boffers with uh, 365 rounds and either a 30 caliber Browning or a 7.62 M60 machine gun. There were about 3,700 of these tanks made between 52 and 59 and the M42 earned the nickname Duster during the Vietnam War. This is an old mold design and you'll find after looking over the parts that there's considerable amount of flash that needs to be taken care of as well as pin marks and, and sprue marks uh, where the parts come off the sprue. So you'll have to do considerable amount of cleanup and I recommend a lot of test fitting as well to make sure that the parts fit together. There is some light script work for the copyrights and things and a sticker on the bottom uh, for the logo that you'll want to remove uh, and just use a little bit of uh, light sandpaper to smooth those over. Another issue that you might find is called a sink mark and this one was found on the front hole plate. You will need to just put some putty over that and smooth it out with some sandpaper too if you want a nice finish for your model. You'll find that most of the parts in this model were painted Model Master Olive Drab and you can either do that all at once or in stages as we'll show you here except for the figures which are painted in uh, clothing and uniform colors. Now all ten of the outer road wheels, the inner road wheels and the wheel axle arms and wheel pins are painted and then the assembly is repeated ten times. The outer road wheel is attached to the inner and then wheel pin number seven is installed into the outer wheel through the inner road wheel and secured to the road wheel axle arm. If this is done correctly the road wheel axle assembly will rotate. Paint the left and right sides of the hole uh, also a model master olive drab and collect these parts for construction. Insert the five road wheel assemblies into the right hole side by the road wheel axle arms and the five spring levers which are attached to the ends of the road wheel axle arms locking them into place. Duplicate the process for the left hole side assembly and once again if they're done correctly the road wheel axle arms will be able to operate. Now we'll paint the inner compensating and outer compensating wheels along with the uh, wheel pins number seven olive drab and when they're dry we'll do the next step twice. The outer compensating wheel is attached to the inner and then the wheel pin is slid through the inner compensating wheel into the outer one and then they will uh, squeeze into place uh, without glue. Grab these parts from the kit and they are painted olive drab. Then the outer dry drive sprocket is attached to the inner drive sprocket and then the wheel pin is slid into the outer drive sprocket and through the inner drive sprocket to be attached to the right drive housing on the right side and the left drive housing on the left. A compensating wheel assembly and the right drive sprocket are attached to the right hole side assembly. Then a compensating wheel assembly of the left drive sprocket are attached to the left side of the hole. Get out the inner and um, outer track rollers and those will be painted olive drab and then the outer track roller is attached to the inner track roller uh, six times. So find the two shackles and the front hole plate and then we'll attach those to the front of the hole plate as you see in the red circles. For a nice finish I filled the um, sink mark in the hole plate with some green putty and after it dried I sanded it smooth and then it's painted uh, olive drab as well. Cut these pieces out which are the rear hooks, tail lights, the toe shackles and the pintle <coughs> hook and they're attached to the rear hole plate in the places provided and then the rear hole plate assembly is painted uh, olive drab also. Now we can attach the front 
and the rear hole plate to the right hole side and then the left hole side is attached to the uh, front hole plate and the rear hole plate and then the three of the track rollers are installed into the right hole side assembly and the wheel retainers then attached to the inner track rollers locking them into place then the left side is assembled in the same manner stage these pieces for assembly but first sand smooth the uh, copyright logos and then the whole bottom both seats and both seat backs are painted olive drab attach the seats to the whole bottom and the seat backs are then attached to the seats now attach the whole bottom assembly into the whole assembly locating the gluing points and using some good strong glue there as you can see the bottom hole plate underneath is not painted uh, because there's a seam that's left after you glue those pieces together around the perimeter and that should be filled in and smoothed uh, out with some sandpaper and prepped for paint uh, prior to uh, finishing get out the rubber tracks and they're assembled with some super glue on the ends and then installed into the hole assembly. Now the hole assembly is painted Model Master Olive Drab just prior to that. These parts and the left and right guns are then painted steel uh, for the barrels and olive drab for the receivers etc. And the guns top, gun sight and the ammo chute are painted uh, drab and then both flash suppressors are painted steel also. The artillery shells were painted with some silver for the casings and gold for the rounds. Gather up the pieces that you see here, the gun shield and the cradle halves, both the seats and the seat backs, the turret base and the turret are painted olive drab and then the left and right cradle halves are attached to the turret's base. The gun shield is glued to the gun assembly before the gun assembly is snapped into the cradle halves and then the seats are glued to the turret base and the seat backs are attached to the seats. Once you've got that assembled, stage the gun assembly straight up in the air so that the turret can be secured to the turret base in a, a little bit. Paint the two gun mounts, the radio masts, the swivel mount and the machine gun olive drab. And then the two turret storage boxes are painted uh, brown and the brown was a bit shiny so I I sprayed a little dull coat over it so I'd use a flat brown there now both turret storage boxes the gun mounts and the radio masts can be attached to the turret assembly and the machine gun is installed into the swivel mount then the machine gun assembly is attached to one of the gun mounts paint the engine compartment flat black and then install it into the hull assembly after it's dried Gather up the pieces that you see here and the front door uh, is held in place with the two door hinges numbers 38 so the left and right hatch are held in place with the hatch hinges and then the center grill door is glued into place. Now the two side grill doors are held in place with door hinges number 25 and the top accessory door uh, is, is held in place with the two door hinges numbers 26. You must take care that all of the hatches and doors are to be operational during the assembly process so as not to get glue in areas that would prevent it from opening. Now the whole top assembly then is painted uh, olive drab making sure everything stays operational after the paint's dried. The rear accessory door then is painted olive drab as well. After the rear accessory door has been carefully installed into the whole top assembly um, and it is cured there. The um, step 5 completes the model to this point as you can see what that will look like. Get these pieces out of the kit and paint them olive drab and then the right stowage cover and the water can are attached to the right stowage box before the right stowage box assembly then is attached to the tank. Now the spare gun barrels are attached to the left side of the tank on the top of the deck there and the left stowage cover is attached to the left stowage box and then that assembly is installed onto the tank assembly above the spare gun barrels. Now the left and right air cleaners are added to the tank assembly. The headlights then can be installed onto the tank assembly too. Paint the exhaust pipes and the tool trays olive drab 
and an exhaust pipe then is installed to the right into the right tool tray and then the assembly is attached to the tank. Now the other exhaust pipe is installed onto the left tool tray and also attached on the left side. Now put the turret assembly into position and install it into the tank assembly. Use the box art to add decals 6, 9, 8, 1, and 4, and 5, and they are applied one at a time to the front of the tank. Use plenty of warm water, and if there are any um, model, uh, any crevices or or any uh, rivets or anything that need to be covered with the decal, use some of the aftermarket setting solutions to help those um, follow the contours in that regard. Decal number three uh, can be applied to the rear of the tank assembly and, and decals uh, two, seven and the other number two are applied to the turret. Now we can uh, turn our attention to the crew figures that come with the kit and um, you may find that there are some sink marks and some flash you'll need to repair on them. Um, the sinks can be filled in with some of the putty just like the body of the model and then uh, smoothed out. Once that's dry the driver, commander, rifleman, gunner and the loader are painted with uh, a, an, a, a skin tone uh, and then testers light tan for the helmet, uh, the uh, testers flat brown for the belt pouches, rifle and holsters and I use some gold on the belts the testers brown uh, for the stone and uh, the model master flat black for the boots, the watch, and the rifles. Now model master flat interior tan was painted onto the uniforms. Well there you have it. This is an interesting piece from the Vietnam era and there's not a lot of these uh, models out there so this makes an awfully interesting shelf and display kit. Um, there were a few sinks and some um, sprue marks, uh, a few uh, flash areas that need to be addressed, but overall uh, it assembles pretty well. Uh, most of the parts fit together very nicely, but you should test fit them. And then you'll probably find that you want to uh, add a little weathering to this to make it look like it just came off the plains in Vietnam. So if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any others, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.